If you've Airbnb'd before, you know that reviews are a thing. People can leave positive or negative reviews on each listing and write comments in them. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can scrape the raw data behind these reviews for one listing or thousands of listings, and you can make some interesting visualizations that I'll get to at the end. Open up any Airbnb listing in Google Chrome, and I'm going to show you how you can use network traffic interception to look at the structured JSON data that Airbnb sends back to your computer that the website then uses to render the HTML on your client. We're not going to look at the HTML. That's what a lot of web scrapers do, and they usually get it wrong because the HTML can change and it can be very finicky. But if we look at the underlying JSON structure data, we can get reliable data for our reviews. Once you have the listing open, right click somewhere on the page and hit inspect. This is going to open up the Google Developer Console and hit the Network tab. And then I like to select XHR so we can see the JSON requests that go back and forth. So now let's scroll down to see where these reviews are. You'll see it populate with a bunch of tracking things, events, whatever they do. And where are there? Ah, here's some reviews. Excellent location. Da, da, da. So you can see Airbnb shows the aggregate review stats up here. 4.59 stars, everything else. But I want to get individual reviews. So we're going to paginate through here. And Airbnb does Ajax pagination, meaning when I click this button, it's not going to reload the page. It's going to make a request to Airbnb server, and they're going to send back some JSON to my browser that I'm going to take a look at. So let's clear the tab here so we can get a fresh look at whatever is sent. And hit this Next button. And oh man, a lot of stuff just got sent. So what's useful is if you see a lot of network traffic, just sort by size in descending order. And here I see about 2.8 kilobytes, this home PDP reviews endpoint. Sounds promising. And if I look at the preview, this shows me the data Airbnb sent back. I can see reviews. So I click on this, and I can see here the location is great. It shows when it was created at, and I can see the ID. And what else can I see? I can see the reviewee, who's being reviewed, some things about them, their picture, and I can see something about the reviewer. Also, I can see the rating over here. Looks like a five is a five star. This is interesting because Airbnb doesn't show this on the HTML. So they may not want us knowing what the individual rating is, but I feel that because they sent this to us publicly without us doing anything, we have the right to know what the individual rating is. I mean, we paid for the bandwidth for them to send it to our computer. So if they want to send us the rating, then I mean, I think it's okay if we want to use this data in our analysis. So how do we actually go from this raw JSON to our project? Well, you could copy all this here and then paste it into your local system and create a CSV or load this into a database. Um, one thing you could do is try to automate this because if you click on the headers tab here, you can see the actual URL. So if I were to copy this and paste it in a new tab, I would get the same data back. And you can see it's pretty easy. The listing ID is just here. You could put in any listing ID, which corresponds to this number in the URL after slash rooms and you can get back all the reviews. And you can see how you can paginate and everything. So you're free to experiment with that if you want. But because this is not part of an official Airbnb API, it technically may break the terms of service to access this URL outside of Google Chrome. So I can't actually show you or endorse doing that. But what I can show you is this page here. I have a link to this page below with a bunch of unofficial resources for informational purposes. So you'll see a few videos I have on this underlying secret API and what I have some helpful links to open source libraries that you can see by other developers who looked into this API and they have some libraries in Node and Python that you could use to try to get this data and a couple more videos. And for fun, I document some of these endpoints here, like here's the reviews one that we saw on my data platform. And if we were to click into this and look at it on the data platform, you could see the URL builder would let me put in any individual listing ID like the one here, I could just punch in this ID here, and then the Steve C platform will automatically construct the hypothetical URL it could call. And what's really cool is that Steve C can actually run this over a proxy, get all the JSON back, and through a very special algorithm, denormalize all this JSON and flatten it into CSVs automatically so I can get a nice flat file of all the reviews, and it can also do automatic pagination and if I use the workflows feature, I can feed it multiple listing IDs. Like if you watch my other video on how I scrape multiple listing IDs from New York City um, in about the tens of thousands, I can take that list of 10,000, say, and put it in here. And then Steve C would go one by one, 
paginate, and then stitch all that together in a single CSV if I were to hit this green button. But because this is an unofficial URL, and per this stern warning here, uh, I can't actually hit this green button. So you'll just have to go and kind of manually copy and paste all this data here into your own CSV. Uh, and then eventually you'll get something that looks like this. So I just kept clicking around, going listing by listing, and I did that network interception trick to look at the JSON I intercepted. And I just copied and pasted each of the values into this Excel sheet. So for example, this column here, column B, corresponds to the listing ID and the URL. So this, all these here are reviews for a single listing for 3831. And then I put the text in here in column C, a few other things like the language, and I got that star rating, I put it in column U. So here you can go and see that here are all the reviews for 3831. And then when I was done with that one, I just went to the next one. Here's 5238. And I just kept sat here and going and going and going. I don't have a really big social life. And I did that about 365,000 times. I definitely did not use that green button I showed you earlier because that may or may not break the terms of service because it would be automated access to their platform. I definitely sat here in Google Chrome and copied the data that was intercepted through my legitimate use of their website. So once you get your CSV file of Airbnb reviews, no matter how you got it, we can start doing some analysis on the aggregate data. So in my example, I have 365,000 reviews from New York City over the span of Airbnb history. So you, however you get yours, you can do your own analysis on this. In this case, I just want to do a quick time series analysis, look at the distribution of ratings, and understand what that mysterious value, the review rating number that we saw, what does that actually mean? At least my interpretation of it. And do some quick natural language processing, build some word clouds. There's a lot we can do with this data. So to get started, just load your CSV into pandas using the read CSV function, and you'll get a data frame. Each row here represents a review from an Airbnb listing. So you can see here the listing ID is in this column. So there are multiple reviews for one listing. And you can see the actual text here. And if you scroll a little bit, you can see that mysterious reviews.rating column. What does this mean? That's what I want to know. I'm going to lose sleep over it. So first thing I want to do is when I see a column in a data set, I usually like to look at the distribution, especially if it's like a categorical column. So here it ranges from 0 to 5. And I just want to see. What's the frequency? Is it an even distribution? Or is it like 20% zeros, ones, twos, threes? Or is there some sort of pattern? And I can see here, on the right side is five. It kind of plotted weird. But the majority of these rating values are a five. Looks like about 300,000 of them are fives. Maybe 50,000 of them are fours. And then there's a tail of zero through threes. So that makes me believe that zero probably means it was a really bad review. And five, well, the majority of them, it means it was probably a really good review. Airbnb thrives on positive reviews and a positive atmosphere, so it doesn't surprise me that ma the majority of these reviews are positive. It's not like an Amazon book review where people have mixed feelings. If you stay in Airbnb for the ecosystem to survive, people need to have good experiences. So I'm not too surprised there. So let's roll with that, and let's assume that a rating of zero is a negative review. That's what most people would probably assume, right? Well, because like I said, you need to be extra cautious when you look at undocumented data. So here, I wanted to look at an example review. So what I can do here is use the locate method and go on ratings and find the rows that have a zero rating. So here, the first one I got back is in German. I'm going to skip that one. And here, this one says, reservation was canceled five days before arrival. This is an automated posting. That doesn't sound very negative. I'd like to share with you the beautiful experience to Ben's apartment. Oh, this sounds pretty good. This doesn't sound negative at all unless it's really sarcastic. No, this looks decent. Ben's place was very comfortable and easy to access. Yeah, this was. these look like positive reviews. These do not look like negative reviews at all. Really great, I would come back again. So something with rating zero isn't negative. So what's going on here? Are they just random? Let's take a couple, look at the ones with a one. And here we go. I wish I had known things I know now so I could make a better here. These are the negative ones. Oh, geez. Okay, so this person wrote a novel. Do not go here. Okay, so these are definitely negative. Let's take a look at the fives and make sure they're actually positive. Location exactly described, like the area, very nice. Awesome host, very responsive. Okay, so it looks like zero. We really don't know what that is. Maybe it's neutral or they didn't leave a rating or it's some legacy flag in their old system. But we do know that ones look very negative and fives look very positive. So 
it looks like maybe it corresponds to stars. One star to five star, there's no such thing as zero stars. So that's good, otherwise we would have made some mistakes on our analysis that we did a little bit of investigation. So with that in mind, let's now take a look at how does the volume of reviews evolve over time. So I kind of want to know what is the overall volume of Airbnbs in New York City look like over time. So I expect to see it growing as Airbnb got popular in New York. And in that growth, I want to see if maybe during certain periods of time, negative reviews started trending more uh, or if it's always been uniform. So what I do here is I group by the reviews rating, which is going to be from zero to five. And then I get the date time and I use value count. So for each of the date times, which is actually uh, a month in this case, I'm going to get the number of reviews uh, for that month and with that rating value. So if there are like, let's say 10,000 five star reviews in January, I'm gonna get a number of 10,000 five star and then whatever, let's say 500 four star, things like that. And I can graph them and stack them on top of each other. So here, no surprise, Airbnb grows exponentially up until about 2018, then it starts leveling off. So these are just the total number of reviews. And here I color coded them with zero being white because we know it's neutral and then uh, one being red, five being green, light green, yellow, etc. So we can see here that one, there are seasonal trends. It looks like in the beginning of the year, the number of re reviews drop significantly, then pick back up. Not sure why, I know uh, Airbnb gets busy around New Year's Eve. If you see my other video about occupancy rates in Airbnb, we go into that a little bit about which times of year are people booking most in New York or anywhere else if you wanna get that data. Uh, we can see there are some seasonal trends. I don't actually see too much many difference over the years about negative reviews. I was wondering if maybe like, uh, I know there was a lot of protests against Airbnb a while back, maybe in like 2016, if I would see a larger spike, but everything looks pretty much predictable year over year. It does look like back in 2013, though there were, the ratio of positive to negative reviews was a little bit lower. And then here it looks like, you know, nowadays positive reviews just blow it out of the park. Maybe they started incentivizing positive reviews. Uh, there are a number of reasons that we could explain this. Um, anyway, this looks pretty good to me. So now I know how Airbnb reviews have evolved, evolved over the years. And another thing I want to do is, remember in those negative reviews, you saw people write long, drawn out novels of their experience. So I have a hunch that if I write a negative review, it's going to be typically longer than a positive review. So I want to chart over time, instead of charting the volume of reviews over time, I want to chart the length of the review by number of characters in the review over time. So here, instead of seeing the negative ones get squashed, I um, should expect to see them on kind of the same playing field as the other reviews because now I'm looking at the mean number of characters for each review, for each month, for each rating. So here, very simply, I can see the same time scale back in 2009, uh, 2010 to current day. And the red ones are the negative reviews and the y-axis is the number of characters in the review. So no surprise here, the negative ones year after year, month after month, consistently have more words than the positive reviews. Because when you have a negative experience, you tend to want to justify why you had a ne negative experience and you write a long, angry novel. Usually if you have a great time, there's nothing to complain about. It's the old adage, no news is good news. Hey, you had a great time, this place was clean and nice, good job. So you can see here that you know the average positive review is only about 250 characters compared to 750 for the negative ones. And also this is kind of interesting, back in 2013, 14, the negative ones had significantly more characters. Maybe this because there was there was fewer of them. Uh, people there were more early adopters to Airbnb. They took the time to write more negative reviews, and then over time, uh, people who did have a negative experience wrote shorter ones, and that drove the mean down. That's one possibility. Uh, another last thing I want to do is actually look at the words behind these negative versus positive reviews. Are there certain phrases people with negative reviews are using versus positive reviews? So for this, I created two uh, derivative data frames using the location function, and then here I get bad reviews, and it's a new data frame assigned to the ones with uh, reviews.rating equals one, not zero, and then good reviews are ones uh, with that value set to five. And then here I use the string.concat function, and I concat all of those reviews together, so I get one huge blob of text for all the bad reviews, and one huge blob of text for all the good reviews chunked together. And then I feed them into this word cloud library, which just takes a huge string. So first I give it the bad reviews, and then I do some visualization here. And this shows a word cloud where the words get bigger the more frequently they're used. So in the negative review case, you can see the most common words are place, room, and host. So we know they're complaining. So this is kind of telling us what they're complaining about. These are all nouns. They're complaining about the room. It was going to be too small, wasn't as advertised. Or the host, which is interesting. They're actually complaining about the person. 
maybe they lied to them or they just weren't a friendly person. Uh, and then you can see here, kind of in the smaller words, or what are they actually complaining about? There's dirty building, shower towel. Uh, you could do, we could do some more analysis in another video if you want, let me know in the comments. And I did the same thing with the good reviews, the ones with the five star ratings. And here's what we found. Great host, highly recommend, great location, great place in New York. What's interesting is in the positive reviews, people are talking about the location, New York and great location. But in the negative reviews, I don't see anything mentioning location. One thought I have is that if you don't like the Airbnb, I'm not gonna complain it was in a bad location because I knew that before I went to the Airbnb. Yeah, I would look kind of silly if I complained about a hotel and I said, why didn't you like the hotel? It was in a bad location, but I knew where it was before I stayed at it. But in the, the other case, when someone has a good experience at the Airbnb, it lets them enjoy their actual experience, the location. So what makes them go is they say, oh, well, I like my place in New York. It was a good location because I have nothing to complain about. They can reflect upon the experience more and it shows how because of the most, most of the reviews are positive on Airbnb, it shows how it just allows people to have a better experience and talk about the location more. So that's it for now. Let me know in the comments what kind of data you want to see from Airbnb reviews or other Airbnb types of data. I have other Airbnb videos, so be sure to subscribe to the Steve C Data channel so you don't miss those future videos and see my other work on Airbnb. If you like this, leave me a thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know why so I can make improvements in the future. Be sure to subscribe and like and stay data driven. That's it. Take care and good luck on your Airbnb adventures.